Hello, welcome to this video on Harpoon Captain's Edition Vassal Module. This time we're going to be taking a look at how to play Harpoon Captain's Edition using this module in a head-to-head -head situation. This assumes you're going to be playing via a live Vassal server and as such you'll have just two to four players, NATO and Soviet. And we're going to start here with just the NATO player. And as you can see on top, we have the NATO window options are available, whereas the Soviets are not. So Soviets do have some things that are going to be hidden from the NATO player. Now we're going to start this by creating some task forces for the NATO. And it's going to be the same task forces as in the first video. So it would be the same Merchant and Arlay Burke. But this time, because it's head to head, we're going to use some dummy counters. And we'll take two dummy counters, pardon me, dummy cards. Let me rearrange my stacks here. Okay, now I'm going to assign task force numbers randomly. And this will hopefully will help create some confusion amongst the Soviet player or players simply because in a head-to-head -head game all the counters on the map are visible and at least this way with the dummy cards and task forces there is ambiguity which helps create fog of war. I'm also going to be using a combat air patrol consisting of F-18s. So I'm going to pull that out as well. Just for quick reference. Okay. Now I'm going to switch to the Soviet side. I'm going to have to switch back and forth, unfortunately, uh, to show you each side and how they would function in the game. The Soviets, as before, would be strictly air power. There's going to be a bare D for reconnaissance and backfires for strike. Okay, and the, let's see, I need a counter sheet. Uh, set up the bases. Put the bears and the backfires. Into the ready, ready aircraft box. Now, a patrol aircraft can start on the map at the beginning of the game, but I'm not going to do that for this game. Uh, yeah, okay. Now I'm going to uh, put my movement chits in the cup since uh, I'm probably going to use patrol A for the Soviets. Actually, what I'll do is start the patrol A. No, I'm not going to start him anywhere. Okay, push the retire button, switch back to the NATO player. Now we have used task force 1, 2, and 3, with number 3 being the real task force. And I'm going to arbitrarily place them. Here. Yeah, I think I'm going to do another one over here and another one, one two, over here. Again, the mission for the NATO player is to get the merchant to Bodo. Also, at the beginning of the game, you can start combat air patrol aircraft 
on map. And that's what we're going to do. So we'll take the F18 and the cap. I'm going to turn the radar status on the cap to show that the radar is active. NATO player will have to take movement chits for Task Force 1, 2, and 3 and move them to the cup. And I think we are ready to start. So as before, if you've seen the first video, when we left click and draw from the cup, that's the point where a movement chit will be randomly selected and it's going to be patrol A. So I switch to the Soviet player. Bear D is going to go in the patrol A box. And the patrol A counter goes on the map. This way the NATO player does not know which aircraft this patrol counter represents. But because there's a combat air patrol here, the patrol has to be careful about where he flies. I believe there's a air search radius of two, so two hexes around. Is uh, the intercept zone. So we'll make our patrol A movement. And we're going to be very systematic about this. Now I want to show you TU-95 has a surface search range of 2, so we have to get within 2 hexes of the task force to detect it. Okay, that ends Patrol A's movement, and the NATO player would have to announce to the Soviet player that he detects nothing. That could still mean there's a submarine in that location, but because this scenario only uses surface task forces, uh, you could actually at this point here just say that you, uh, that the task force is a dummy. So task force one is the NATO one of the NATO dummies. So if you wanted to give it up at this point in time, you would just simply take that, move it to the detected combat board, where the Soviet player will be able to see it. Um, if you don't want to remove it from the game at this point, you don't have to, because if it were a submarine, for example, you wouldn't remove it from the game. You would just simply announce to the Soviet player that there was no surface radar contact. But for this purposes, I'm just trying to show you how the dummy cards work. So the next turn is uh, Task Force 1, which I'll go ahead and move them anyways. The next movement is Task Force 2, which we know is also a dummy. I'll go ahead and move him. Oh, you know what? I forgot something here. I forgot to put speed markers on these task forces. Speed of 2. Using the plus key on the keyboard to increase the speed. And then task force 3 now gets a speed marker. Is limited to a speed of two because the merchant has a speed of two. But we also have the option to put on our air search radar, which we will do by increasing the counter to the red side to show 
that radar is active on this task force. This may or may not be a clue to the Soviet player in a head-to-head -head game, so use at your own discretion, I suppose. And now we're going to go to the next turn. Task Force 2 was drawn first, so Task Force 2 gets to move. Task Force 1, the known dummy counter, gets to move. And then Task Force 3, sometimes that's how it goes, you know, one player gets everything all at once. And then of course Patrol A gets to move next. So Patrol A having a pretty substantial range can go almost anywhere on this map. So what we're going to do, oh, pardon me, I have to uh, switch to the Soviet player in order to operate any Soviet owned counters. The TO-95 has a radius of 50 hexes which is greater than the entire map so you can pretty much go anywhere on the map. Okay, is now within two hexes of Task Force 3 and can detect them. So I'm going to switch back to the NATO player. The NATO player now would have to take his Task Force 3 and move it to the detected combat board. At this point the Soviet player has an option to initiate an airstrike. And since that's our only offensive capability at this time, that's what we are going to do. We we'll switch back to Soviet, open up the bases, stack these counters. I'm going to place them on the map. And I'm going to move them in such a way that they can attack Task Force 3 without being intercepted by the cap. And they have a range of 44, so pretty much anywhere on the map they can go. out of the two hex range you need to get within three hexes of task force three and that should do it right there now this begins the combat phase I have to switch back to NATO player. Because the uh, Soviet player cannot manipulate the cards of another player. And just like the first scenario, uh, yeah, the first video, arrange your ships in pairs for escorting vessel and the escorted vessel. Now these four backfire, actually a total of eight backfire aircraft, each are going to fire two long range missiles. So each flight counter produces eight missiles. and the missiles will arrive over Task Force 3 it's within range of the cap aircraft so I think what we're going to do is probably the long range SAM fire from Burke then cap interception 
from Bodo and then we'll proceed with the missile strike. So uh, where's my dice? Here we are. We have a long range SAM of 10. So let's roll those dice. Open up the reference chart. We'll consult the SAM column. 4, 5, and 6 is a hit with a 6 as a double hit. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, well, miscounting, sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 hits. The defending player gets to pick where those uh, where those hits are applied. So I will take the first eight hits here, and then using the minus key, 9, 10, 11. <clears throat> Pardon me, combat air patrol from Bodo consists of one aircraft out of four, because only one aircraft at any given time is aloft from a flight of four. So air-to-air -air combat. Air to air attack value of two. It's going to be a difference of two minus zero. So there's a yeah the uh, attack value, which is eight a two. Missiles have an attack value of zero, so it's going to be a plus two to each die roll. Since there's only one aircraft attacking, it'll be a one plus the two produces a three on the air-to-air -air combat that is a hit and any hits on a missile are automatically destroy the missile so take out one more I don't think the aircraft damage applies to the missiles Yeah, it says each hit destroys one missile, so you don't re-roll on the aircraft damage table. So now the Soviet player would have to allocate where he wanted his four missiles remaining to attack. We're going to attack the merchant because that's the whole point, is to prevent the merchant from reaching Bodo. We now have four missiles with no uh, modifier to the die roll. We're going to be consulting the bombs and SSM column. So a three and greater is a hit with six being a double hit. And we have a double hit. So merchant number one takes two hits but is not completely sunk but is reduced to a speed of one and switch back to the Soviet player the task is over so the we'll send these backfires back to Severomorsk You see how they ended up over here. All right, we'll go to next turn. And the backfires are ready again. Drawing patrol A, which is very unfortunate for NATO because now they have a chance to strike again. And we will do so. One, two, 
one, two, three hexes. So essentially we are going to replay this turn all over again. So I will switch to the NATO player. And once again, we have two sets of eight missiles each being launched. We have cap interception and we have also long range missile interception. The rules say you have to do cap interception first, but I don't know if it really matters in this case here, but let's go ahead and do the cap. So we get one with a modifier of plus two. Reference chart, we have a three. That is a hit. So we'll subtract one. We have a long range SAM value of 10. There'll be no modifier. And we're looking for, a f <clears throat> pardon me, a four or, or greater for hits. One, two, three, four hits total. Well, that's unfortunate. One, two, three, four. Now the Soviet player at this point would allocate the missiles On, uh, on the Soviet player's detected combat board is where that will take place. Because these markers are not player specific, it doesn't matter who actually moves them or decrements them. Point defense value of three for Burke. So he gets three dice. On the PD column, only a one misses. Six is a double hit. So we have one, two, three hits, two, three. So there are five dice remaining for surface to surface missile. Pardon me, this would be air to surface missiles. And on the SSM column three and greater, one, two, three, four hits on Burke. Open up the roster. Arlie Burke only has two hull hits, so he is definitely sunk. So we'll take Arlie Burke, return to deck. And you see it goes right back to the card deck. And we can delete that missile marker. The merchant under attack by three air to surface missiles. We need three or greater and we have one hit. Open up the roster we know that one hit is all that takes now to sink it. So the Merchant 2 is sunk. Please note you don't have to have this window open to send the card back to the deck. I'm just simply showing you where it's going. We'll delete. We'll delete the entire task force here is also deleted because it's been wiped out. And that ends the scenario with the Soviet victory in preventing the reinforcement of Bodo. Now uh, this is just uh, the demonstration of how to use this game in the head-to-head -head play, the next video will show you how to do a referee play. That concludes the video. Thank you for watching.